Hello, it's Gary Fox, and we're back with the uh, second half of this one about hatching. I keep wanting to say hashing. <laughs> uh, anyhow, I'm starting right back where I left off. Uh, I'd like to point out one thing right now. Let's go back to the very first one. Whoops. Well, it doesn't. It kind of shows what I wanted to show. Uh, if you look at these blocks, you'll see that it started here somewhere in the middle, and uh, it ended over here at the very end. That just happened to be in that case. Uh, let's go try another one. Yeah, this is the one I wanted to show you. You see, it has started here. It started somewhere in the middle, and it has kind of a small sliver and on this side it start it ended up with a little bit bigger sliver so it didn't center it to the block and it didn't really start from a, a, a lines with from the edge of the block in other words it had nothing to do with the block when it drew the lines I believe LibreCAD draws that based upon the uh, the origin point that red plus that's on there so when you draw different blocks they actually have the same, uh, the same reference, the, the lines would line up. The only difference is that once you move the block, these lines, once they're drawn, they're drawn. So once you move the block, the lines are going to uh, move with the block. But other than that, when it first initially draws them, it has no relationship to what the edges are of the, uh, of the line. Hopefully that made sense, what I was trying to say there. Alright, uh, got a couple more. These are gotchas, is what I call them. And so we'll shrink this one. We'll pull this one up. I'll show you the first little subject I want to talk about. Uh, when I say a gotcha, it's kind of unexpected operations. Uh, and it may or may not be unexpected, but if, if it happens and you didn't really expect it, then it kind of is a little bit of a hassle to you. So we're going to hatch and I am going to select this circle and I'm also going to select this octagon so I'm going to have two items, two closed surfaces at the same time. I then go and do my hatch. We'll make this thing back at zero and I hope my scale's okay. I think it is. We hit OK and you see it hatched both of them at the same time. Uh, if I delete, it will delete both of them because it's the same hatch even though it's in two different objects. So we'll hit delete. You see it, it selected both of them and it would delete both of them. So that's one kind of unexpected ob uh, thing. Now I'm going to show you one of them that will really mess your head up until you figure it out. Hopefully what I'm doing here today, I'll help you figure it out. Okay, I've got, what I did was I drew two rectangles and I had them overlap a little bit because I had lined up the two corners of these two rectangles. This is exactly the situation if you were drawing uh, walls of a building. The walls have a thickness and usually you're measuring from the outside of the wall. So you would probably end up with this situation sometimes. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to select one of these. I'm going to use my uh, window select function. And I select this thing. And I try to hatch it. And I get this little error, error down here at the bottom. Hatch, invalid hatch area. Please check that the entity chosen form one or more closed contours. Well, why did that happen? Because it was a, it was an object there. Well, <laughs> so we'll say, okay, we're going to try to beat this thing. So we're going to try something a little different. We'll just try to hatch the whole thing at one time. So we'll do our uh, select window. I'll do this one from the bottom, so even if I only partially select stuff, it, it'll get selected. I do that now, and... Uh, 
and it does this really strange thing where it made the two hatches but it didn't it didn't do it in this corner piece okay what's really going on here is the fact that these edges here are messing with the uh, the program's mind it's the best way I know how to say it. it's messing with its mind so the way to beat it first and I'm gonna fail on the first one and I'm doing it on purpose uh, we're going to make that like that right now it still won't work but we're gonna pretend that we think it will and so we're gonna do our hatch we'll do the window We'll select it all and we hit continue action and we still get the same error what's getting us right now is that little partial line right there and that little partial line right here so now if I do again I do a uh, delete this time and I'm on delete from the top to the bottom so I completely enclose top to bottom so I completely enclose I'm going to delete those two little lines there and now if I do a hatch it will work so I say we'll find out it usually as soon as I say something for sure will work it won't and it did work so I got it right so you see there's one of the little gotchas is those areas there i'll give you an even worse case of that uh, we will shrink this window and we'll go to our last one this is the last example okay like i said very often you'll have uh, hatches where you're trying to show different parts are being fit together so we're going to say like this is a metal disc a metal disc and we got a piece of rubber in between so we would want, we're going to get smart, we're going to do the rubber one first. At least that's what we think we're going to do. So we try to select this, and I don't have the outside line. So let's click on those. Click. Oops. Still in. Okay, but you see it selected that whole line. So when I try to do it, even though this is an enclosed area, and we're we'll trying to make this a solid fill, it won't work. And it gives me the same thing about I got a couple of unclosed contours. Well, there's a couple workarounds. By the way, we'll do a hatch. We'll do it on one of the outside lines just to show you that that would work. Actually, we're doing both. And we'll go to our ANSI. And you see that did work. Okay, the best, the, probably the best workaround to, to, to get what we want is that we can do it. And you see this one will work. And that's because that's truly an object. These lines are not going up and uh, up to the ends up there. And so now I'll do it, and I'm going to do a solid fill, show that that's made out of some solid piece of rubber. Now I'll do the uh, hatches on the outside, show that there's something different, except I better hit the right button. So we do this one, and this one. the ANSI fill and you see that worked and that did what we wanted to do the way I fixed it I'll make it explicit on this so we'll go back and delete those two fills and I accidentally screwed up and deleted a line in there let's undo that and uh, this line and this line I, if I now show you I'll 
act like I'm going to delete, but I'm not going to take it that far. See that I've split that line into three parts so that I got closed entities here when I uh, when I do it. Okay, another way you could do it is that you could offset and have a very, very small space. So this one here will work, but it's going to be hard to do. Uh, and uh, let's just go ahead, I'll zoom in, I'll show you how I did this. See, I'm not zoomed in enough yet for this line. See, there's a little bit of space there. It's actually two different objects. That's really hard to do. Uh, I mean, in most cases, you, you got to do all the zoom in, zoom out. You're better off to do it that way right there, uh, to have the, the two objects up against each other. Anyhow, that gives you another idea. That's another gotcha that you can have on these things. And uh, hatching is something that you really have to think about. It's often very useful. Uh, it's good to highlight, you know, the differences in things. I use it quite a bit on the sketches I do for my website. Uh, it, but it has a lot of problems. It, it, it complicates your life, and you have to think about the steps before you, before you start getting into hatching. I recommend doing the hatching almost toward the very last thing. It's right up there with a dimensioning. You don't want to do it until you get toward the end of whatever you're trying to draw. So uh, you now know a few gotchas about hatching. You know how hatching works. Uh, we got a little bit of time left. Now we don't. We don't have that much. So looks like it took pretty much both uh, videos. I'd recommend that if you think you like doing hatching, that you draw some little boxes, you create a drawing with a bunch of boxes, and then you put the label of the, the hatch name under each one, and then fill the boxes full of hatching. I also recommend that normally you create a layer for the hatch. I didn't do it on most of these, but usually I have a, a black hatch or red hatch or something like that so that I have my hatch layers on different layers than I do the objects so that way I can turn it off and on as I need to. Um, those are my two recommendations. Mostly you just have to poke and hope and get it the way you want. Very often I've had the uh, scale wrong on my particular computer. It will die if I have the scale too tight. Um, it will bog down the uh, video card, and this thing will lock up. It'll lock up on me, and it would especially do it when I was recording one of these videos. So again, I recommend that you always start with the scale fairly large, and then work your way down till you know what you 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 want. Anyhow, I believe that's it. So hopefully, I taught you a thing or two. Uh, hopefully, it was worth your time. Appreciate you watching and listening. Scary Fox of Great Geek.